Hello everyone, welcome to October's testing hot new makeup releases video. I just got my Sephora order in and I will be testing out the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Primrose eyeshadow palette. I also picked up the new Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint as well as one of the new Beauty Blender Bounce Blushes. This is a liquid whip cream blush. I picked up Cheeky Pink. Then I got the new Huda Beauty Balm Brows Full and Fluffy Fiber Gel. You know I like my fluffy brows and I have a very difficult time achieving that look because my brows are so sparse and I have a lot of brow products that I love that I've talked about in other videos, but we'll see how this compares. And then I also got this new Milk Concealer and Eyelid Primer. And then somehow I accidentally ordered two of the same shade of one of the new Makeup Forever Rouge Artist Shine On Sculpting Lip Colors. I'm going to be returning one of them. I purchased the shade 182 Jolly Blush. And as always, all of the product names and shade names will be listed down below in the description box. I also had a code for a sample of the new Rare Beauty Universal Volumizing Mascara, so I'll try that. However, I do have the new Velour Magnetic Lashes to try as well. And when I'm done with my makeup, I will be setting it with the new One Size Preserve the Serve Luminous Setting Spray. I've heard good things about this. And I will also be using for the very first time the new BK Beauty collaboration with Angie of Hot and Flashy, if you don't already know, is a beautiful and fabulous mature content creator here on YouTube and Instagram. And she worked with BK Beauty to design what they say are the softest and most user-friendly for mature skin brushes on the market. So I'm going to be testing these out as well. So I've already done my skin prep. When I woke up this morning, I used for the very first time this mask. It's from Caudalie. It is the Vinergetic C Plus Instant Detox Mask. I don't know if this is new, I don't think it is, but I purchased it when I purchased all of these other items because I had heard such good things about it on TikTok. It did go viral on TikTok. There's even a sign at Sephora that says viral on TikTok. So I used this this morning and I left it on for about five, six minutes, and I then rinsed because my skin was feeling extremely tight. I don't notice like a huge difference after just one use, but um, we'll see. I'll use it a couple more times and I will update you on that. Then I used my um, Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream Light, and then I used a little Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. So that has all settled in, and now we're gonna go in with this Milk Primer. I'm not going to use a primer with this bounce skin tint because I want to see how it works on its own, but I am going to prime my lids and see how this feels. It has good reviews so far. Oh, it's one of those that you really can't tell if you're using the right amount because it's clear. Usually with eye primers, you want to use just a little bit and a little bit goes a long way. However, I would say most of the eyeshadow primers I've used in the past had at least some tint to them, so I knew if I covered the entire area or not. So I'm really not sure. Like, it feels like there's nothing on this right now. So how do I know? Oh, I can feel it. Okay, it's there. It's there. So I'm gonna put a little here. It just feels like you're not putting on anything. It just, it's weird. I'm obviously not explaining this well. That's why whenever I do these videos, I always at least try to update you at the end of the month in my monthly favorites and fails video because obviously I'm not going to know how effective this product truly is by just using it once. I mean, it's possible that I'll think it's amazing after one use. And if I do feel that way, I will add a little caption at the bottom of your screen in editing to let you know if I have any solid thoughts either way. On this. So now that my lids and under eyes are prepped, I'm going in with this skin tint. For those of you that know me well, you are aware that I am not usually a skin tint kind of person. I like a little bit more coverage. However, my friend Stephanie Marie 
told me that she loved this foundation and that she felt like it did give decent coverage. She's not a full coverage kind of girl. So we don't always love the same foundations. She also lives in a very humid climate and I live in a very dry climate. So that can definitely be a factor as well. So this is how the foundation comes. You do get one ounce for $29. It comes in 20 shades and I will be using light number five. So I think to try this, I'm gonna use a brush. This one is from Flower Beauty. And this has a dropper. Ooh, it looks a little chunky in there. I don't know if you can see what I'm seeing or not. It just sort of looks like what happens when a foundation is really old, that it's sort of separated and has like little chunks in there. I don't know, weird. Okay, we're gonna keep it going and I'm going to place a couple drops on Okay, I don't even know how many drops that was, I'm sorry. And here we go. The color is good. It's definitely on the sheer side, but it is a tint, so I wasn't expecting BAM coverage. It's very pretty. My face is getting a little bit red. It just usually gets red when I do anything when I put any pressure to my face. I do like the way this looks. It feels very, very light, but then again, it's a tint. <laughs> and I just got some in my hair. That's always great. All right, so let's see what this looks like up close. I still have to do my nose, but it looks very, very nice. It's not smoothing my pores or anything, but it doesn't claim to do that. It does claim that it is a skin tint that hydrates with light, medium, buildable coverage with a naturally radiant finish. I would say that's true. It contains hyaluronic acid that helps to visibly plump skin and improve the look of fine lines. Niacinamide and willow bark extract to visibly smooth, brighten, and reduce the look of irritation and minimizes the appearance of pores and blemishes to keep skin looking smooth and clear. So actually it does claim to smooth the pores. I guess it does a little. All right, it does look very nice and natural. This could be a good everyday foundation for me. I am having to use quite a bit to cover my entire face. And I don't really feel like I'm using too much. I do, as I think I already said, like a little bit more coverage than light. So I am trying to get it to the medium stage. This is really nice. If it stays looking this nice, it will get two thumbs up from me. All right, I did not purchase a new concealer, so I'm just going to use my one size concealer and I'm going to apply a little here and here and blend it out with this sponge from Haley's Beauty. So we'll see how this goes on over that primer. It doesn't seem to be catching, which is good. I was worried that a Hydro Grip under eye concealer primer might make it so the concealer kind of catches. I don't know why I thought that, but I did. And anyway, it's not happening. <laughs> do you notice when I do these videos that are just like testing new products that I often struggle with my words more so than I do in other videos? You know what I should have done? I should have done one eye without the primer underneath and then the other eye with, and that would have really told us how well it performs. Darn it. I'll do that another day and I will mention the results in an update. Now because I do have oily skin and it says right on Sephora's website that this is really for someone with more combination skin, I am going to set this with a little powder. I'm gonna use this translucent powder from One Size. No, this video is not sponsored by One Size. I just happen to really like a lot of the products that I've tried. And one of my favorite makeup artists, painted by Spencer, uses this powder a lot and he loves it. So I'm going to take another BK Beauty brush. I say another because I'm going to be using all of these, as I said at the beginning of the video. See, I struggle with my words in these videos. And I'm just fluffing this all over. Step, 
So next up is the Huda Beauty Bomb Brows Full and Fluffy Volumizing Fiber Gel. It retails for $19. I picked up the shade Neutral Blonde. I do really love the Bomb Brows pencil. However, I found that the tip of it just broke way too often. That actually didn't happen the first couple of times I used it, but after I would say about the first week of use, then it started happening. And to me, it's just not worth spending $17 every month on a brow pencil when there are so many other excellent brow pencils on the market. So with this type of product, I typically don't use it on its own because my brows are not as dark as I would like and they're not as full as I would like. And most brow gels don't give me that type of volume on their own. So I was going to apply my Benefit Pomade brow pomade first and then apply this over. But I think just for demonstration purposes, I will show you how it looks on its own. This is the packaging. It's very nice, very sleek. So let's, let's see. Oh, holy moly. I did not realize how tiny the applicator is. All right, I can see the fibers though. So let's start fluffing. I do like how tiny it is. That's that's really nice. For someone with such sparse brows like mine, this is this is great. So it is lifting them. I mean, it's not enough, but um, here's the difference. Not bad, not bad. I'm gonna try going in with this CoverGirl brow pencil that I just have sitting here and see if I can fill it in a little bit more. Because it didn't do much for the front part of my brow and I do need some, some something there. Okay, now I'm going to apply the pencil first and then the Huda Fluffy product. I know I did mention that I might use this, but obviously I didn't. But if you want to see this in action, you can do so by watching last month's Testing Hot New Makeup releases. Now let's try this again over pencil. There we go. Yeah. This is definitely more effective for me at least. Okay, I think we are doing well so far. I do feel like I could use a little bit more smoothing in my nose area, but I think that's just me being picky and my reliance on full coverage foundations coming through. Anytime I wear a foundation that isn't truly full coverage, I do feel a little bit uneasy about it, even though the perception is probably that it's okay. I'm sure you'll all let me know in the comments what you think. So now it's time to go into the ABH Primrose palette. Just look at how beautiful this palette is. It's actually a lot bigger than I expected. It retails for $55. You get 10 eyeshadows, two blushes. Grapefruit seems like it will be a little light. Saddle, definitely too dark. I could possibly mix the two together. However, I'm not going to do that today because I have this Beauty Blender blush I want to try. So maybe what I'll do is I will put a little bit of the grapefruit on just to show you. I really truly feel like it's not going to be enough color anyway. So then I will layer it with the Bounce blush. Actually, before I get into doing my eyes, I do want to bronze or contour my face a little bit. So I'm going to take this brush from the BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy collection. This is the A507. I'm just going to use my Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. And I am going to lightly bronze slash contour first. I gotta say this brush is extremely soft. I'm gonna go in with the shade Honey. And this brush is A506. And I am just going to pat this all over my lid. I like this brush for the lid, although I got way too much over on this inner corner. 
Oops. I've never used a brush like this for my lid. But it does get the job done quickly. It's just that my eyes are so small, it got way too much in this inner corner. And these shadows are so pigmented. Wow. Wow. I do like this brush though. I just have to start farther over. I went too close when I began with this. Darn. It's all right. We'll fix it. We will fix it. Oh my gosh, I just had Bob the Builder, the cartoon, pop into my head. When my boys were little, they watched Bob the Builder. And I think his tagline was, we can fix it. Wasn't it? I think it was. Oh, this brush is so good. And I promise you, I'm not just saying that because of how much I admire both Lisa J, the creator of BK Beauty, and Angie. All right, we're off to a good start with both the brushes and the eyeshadow. You know, I was thinking about using the purpley shades, but because what I'm wearing has more brown in it, I kind of want to try these bronzy shades right in here. So I think I'm going to go with Rouge, and this is a brush A502. And I'm going to tap that on the outer corners. Oh, boy. These shadows are amazing. They're buttery. Oh, and I love this brush. Ah. Oh my gosh, way too much fallout though. Look at that. Oh, okay. We're going to let that sit and then brush it away. I am dying over this brush. This might replace, and this is saying a lot, my Samey Beauty 2.5. Do I have that here or is it in my... Yeah, it must be um, at my vanity. I have like three of them. The Samey Beauty 2.5, I'll put a photo of it somewhere on the screen, has been my favorite. And if you know, you know. If you watch my channel, if you watch my videos a lot, you know how much I love that brush. This, oh, dare I say it's even softer. Oh my goodness, the combination of this palette and these brushes is chef's kiss, as they say. Now I didn't get a lot of fallout on this side. Maybe I just used too much on the other side. This is the kind of palette where it probably would have been wise to do my eyes first before foundation. Now I'm going to take this A503 with nothing on it and just buff everything out. Unfortunately, my camera went out when I was whisking away the fallout, so that is gone. You can either just whisk it away with a brush, you can use eye makeup remover, or you can just do what I mentioned seconds ago, which is do your eyes first. All right, now I'm going to see just how shimmering and sparkling these shimmer shades are by just testing one first with my finger alone. And then if that's not enough, I will try it with a damp brush. But usually with Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadows, I can get enough pigment from her shimmers by just using a finger. I think I'm going to go in with, hmm, I think I'm gonna layer them. I'm gonna layer Fire Opal, ooh, ooh, holy cow. That is a buttery shadow. And very vibrant. It is performing like a pressed pigment. I love it, but I'm gonna take that brush we used on the outer corner and blend it all in. I'm not adding anything to the brush, I'm just using whatever is left on the brush. All right, I wanna use more of these brushes. So I'm gonna go in with the A505. And Sparkling Amber. No, do I wanna use Peony? No, Sparkling Amber. And I'm going to pat that on the center of the lid. Did that do anything? Doesn't look like it did anything. Well, there we go. Yeah, if you press and slide, you'll get more pigment. 
These are extremely shimmery. I would say even more so than the shimmers in other ABH palettes. So take that into consideration as you weigh whether or not you want to purchase this. Super, super shimmery. Let's try a little rose water in the tear duct. Rose water is this light shimmer shade on the end. Now what's not in here, oh, that's pretty. What's not in here is a shade for under the brow. I like to have a little lightness right under my brows. Now I'm gonna darken up the outer corners even more using this A504. So here's a size comparison between the 502 and the 504. And I'm going in with Deep Berry, and I have to get really, really close because when I work on the outer corners of my eyes, it's really hard for me to see. Oh my gosh. Clearly, I didn't see all of this glitter fall out. Oh, oh no. Oh no. It's like a pumpkin colored glitter explosion on my cheeks. No, I'm gonna have to take all that off. This is not coming off with just powder. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, actually, no, maybe I can just remove this area right here and not go underneath my eyes. Ugh. Anyway, I'm not gonna do that until I'm done with the eyeshadow, obviously, at this point. If you learn nothing else from this video, please take away that if you purchase this Primrose eyeshadow palette, you are going to want to do your eyes first before concealer and foundation. So pretty. I feel like I've got a sunset going on on my eyes. And this brush is also like amazing. Now I'm using a BK Beauty 204 and I'm going into the shade Rouge, which was the first color that we used on the outer corner. And I'm pressing that along my lower lash lines. Going to take a little bit of my e.l.f. Hello Hydration Cleansing Balm and just apply it right here. Oh, that's taking it off. Yes, perfect. That is taking all of that off. I didn't even have to remove directly underneath the eyes. But I do have to reapply a little concealer just right here. Or I could use foundation, but I'm going in with a concealer. And once again, the Haley's Beauty Sponge. And I'm also going to take the tip of the sponge to clean up the outer edges of the shadow. So I've just gone and curled my lashes, and now I wanna try this sample of the Rare Beauty Mascara before I try the Velour Magnetic Lashes. I like the applicator. I personally despise rubber bristle mascara wands. I just, I hate them. This is not that. This is a traditional mascara wand. Oh, it's going on nice. Not a lot of length, but definitely volume. It's not pulling out the curl. It's definitely great for every day. It's not enough for me personally for say going out, you know, I have to have my lashes, but my false lashes, but for every day, this looks nice. As long as it doesn't flake, obviously or smudge. All right, so the eyes are pretty bold and it looks a little strange because I have no other color on my face. So I'm going to do what I said earlier that I would do, which is test out this grapefruit shade first as my blush. And you know what? There's not a lot of color on this um, A507 that I used for my light contour. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it for blush too. There's really no color on here. So. Let's see if this works better for blush or, oh. I was wrong about this blush. It's not showing up so much on camera, but in person, 
it is way more pigmented than I thought. I like it. Oh, I like it a lot. What do I do? What do I do? I have this other blush. Where did it go? But I think I'm gonna go with trying the bounce blush on the other side, not over, because I want you to be able to see both. I don't know how I'm gonna fix this for the end of the video to make it look even, but we'll see. So this is what the cheeky pink shade looks like. I'm gonna use my finger for this. Ooh. Ooh, it feels very silky and I'm gonna apply it right up here oh it's very soft and subtle it's blending in nicely it's not lifting the foundation underneath it's very pretty it's very pretty so here's the Anastasia grapefruit from the primrose palette and then here is the beauty blender bounce blush Hmm. Maybe I'll just add a little bit more of this to this side. And then I'll add a little bit of the grapefruit to this side. All right, I think I did it. I think it looks okay. I think it looks even. Now before I apply the Velour Magnetic Lashes, I do want to try one of the two of the exact same shade. Make a Forever lipsticks I got. It's very cool packaging. It actually looks like it could be part of the One Size brand, although the reds are a little different. Oh, it feels nice. And I do like the color. It feels very nice and creamy. It has a little bit of a sweet scent to it that I don't love, but it's going on really nice. Okay, now it's time to try the new Velour Magnetic Lashes. They sent me this little set. The style is called Stick It To Me. So I'm going to gently, gently, peel these off of the magnetic strip. I like how um, natural looking these are. Short and natural looking. That's exactly what I like. And I actually don't need to trim these. I mean, I could to make them more like corner lashes, but I don't need to. I think that's, I think it's gonna be okay. This is the world's tiniest glue. So this goes on just like a liquid eyeliner. there we go I did it that stuck that wasn't terribly difficult all right both lashes are on you definitely want to apply a little bit extra to the inner corners so yeah don't be stingy with the liner you do have to go a little bit heavy with it you don't want the line to be super thick it can't be super super thin either you need to build it up just a little bit so that there's room for the magnets to stick to the liner all right, here's the completed look. So yes, it's a little dramatic, but I love it. I am so impressed by this ABH palette. The pigmentation was incredible. The color story is beautiful. This grapefruit blush was surprisingly pigmented. I did not think it was going to show up on my skin. I will most likely only use this saddle shade as an eyeshadow, and being that it's so large, it will last me a lifetime. Overall, I think the palette is totally worth the money. My only suggestion, recommendation, is what I said several times during the video, that you need to do your eyes first because there is just a ton of fallout with this palette which I personally don't see as being a problem if you don't already have your foundation and concealer done. Speaking of foundation and concealer, the 
Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint I think is very nice based on first impressions. The color Light 5 is perfect for my skin. It's very neutral. It's not too yellow. It's not pink. It is just a beautiful neutral shade. This is something I can definitely see myself using on a regular basis. Moving on to the Milk Eyeshadow and Concealer Primer. I feel like my concealer went on nicely over this. It didn't feel sticky. It blended out very easily. I liked the applicator. So far so good. It remains to be seen whether or not this replaces my previous favorite eyeshadow primer, which is the P. Louise, or if it is beneficial under the eye for concealer. I did not test a new concealer today, but I did test out a new brow product. The Huda Beauty Bomb Brows Fluffy Fiber Brow Gel is okay. Is it better than my $10 Ulta Brow Tint Fiber Gel? No. I actually still believe that the Ulta Brow Tint is superior. The Rare Beauty Mascara Sample was lovely. The Bounce Blush, the Beauty Blender Bounce Blush was also lovely. It doesn't wow me. It's very pretty. I don't feel like the texture is that far off from some of my drugstore cream blushes like Milani. Milani actually has more pigment, so if you want something that's a little bit more user-friendly, but it's obviously more expensive, it's the Beauty Blender. This is really a nice everyday beginner-friendly blush. The Makeup Forever Shine On Lipstick. I love the color. I like the packaging. I like the feel. I really like how it went on. It didn't streak. It feels like nothing on my lips. I will have to follow up with you on longevity, obviously. And then, oh, the lashes, the magnetic lashes. That is also something I will have to follow up with you on. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that I did go in and apply some brown eyeliner to my inner rims. You're probably thinking, you were probably thinking when I popped up on the screen again, Risa, something's a little bit different. You added eyeliner, you added highlighter. Yes, I did. I added Charlotte Tilbury Barbarella Brown to my lower inner rims and then a little um, highlighter from this Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow set. So that is also on my face. Where was I going with this? Oh, the lashes. Um, I don't love how, and this just might be me nitpicking, but I feel like this lash right here is a little bit long. I feel like I might trim them to make them corner lashes. I'm just so picky with my lash styles. I don't love when there's a spiky one close to, closer in towards my nose. I don't know, it's just a personal preference. Um, so one thing I did not do yet is test out the one size preserve the serve. Now, as many of you know, I live and die for my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Setting Spray. So, this one has a lot to live up to. It's a very fine mist. It smells good. I still prefer the scent of the Charlotte Tilbury though. Did give a little radiance, a little dewiness which I'm not sure I will like, simply because I do have more oily skin. So why did I buy a luminous setting spray, you ask? I have no idea. I have no idea. Things that make you go, hmm. hmm. And finally, the seven piece brush set from Angie Hot and Flashy and BK Beauty. This retails for $125, and I think it is worth every penny. These blushes exceeded, these blushes, these brushes exceeded my expectations. They are so, so good. The shapes that she chose are just perfection. The only thing I would have done differently is I would have added one more brush to the set, which would be like a pencil brush or something to use on the lower lash line because in my opinion, all of these are just too big for the lower lash line, but overall, if you are looking to invest in some high quality brushes that feel amazing on the skin, work so well for mature and or smaller and or hooded eyes, you've got to get these. Trust me, you're going to love them. So that'll do it for testing this month's hottest new makeup releases. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. I try to respond to as many as I can. 
If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I do upload new content at least twice per week. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. The username is the same everywhere. It's all Risa Does Makeup. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in my next video.